welcome from uh, Bonded Warehouse of Venezia in Luxembourg. I would like to introduce uh, our guest, uh, Agnes Gintere from uh, one YouTube channel, uh, No Sediments. Uh, Fabrice Maupin, uh, sommelier since 1991, uh, almost like me, uh, and co-founder of Venezia and the chief wine officer. And uh, uh, famous Thomas Heymans, uh, the advisor of Venezia and the winemaker at Chateau Robin. Myself, Piotr Kamecki, I'm the vice president of the World Sommelier Association and Venezia advisor. So, let's start this beautiful rainy day in Luxembourg. I will ask you, white or red? Sparkling. Sparkling for me, always. <laughs> that's, that's a great answer. Uh, obviously white. Uh. Yeah, yeah, but sometimes pink as well makes sense, you know, some nice pink champagne, so why not? But uh, if I would have to choose winter or summer, uh, I would go for champagne, yeah. Great. Fabrice? I would say the three colors. Uh, Rosé is also very, very good, um, but it depends on the season, it depends on the time, it depends on what I want to, to taste, but right now, because it's raining, um, I would say red. Okay, great. Go on. Yes, for me, autumn and, and the rainy days and coming back from the cold temperatures is definitely red. For, for me, uh, I think more white. I, I, when I get older, I drink more white. Uh, more white, a different kind, rather mm, full-bodied uh, uh, white wines. Um, mm, yeah, I would like to drink more Burgundy, but you know, this is the problem of, of, uh, of uh, cash. But is it a, a, a cultural uh, choice? Because uh, I'm living, I'm French, I'm living in Germany. In Germany, they most drink uh, uh, everyday white wine. Uh, and I see in France that the people are drinking more red wine. Is it the same in, uh, in your country? No, I come from Poland. So uh, uh, if you see the, the, the pers from the perspective of the whole year, it's a 50-50 because we are all, uh, that's very international uh, today. Uh, you are from Belgium, <laughs> and you in your country? Latvia, yeah. More. It is very seasonal, yes, because the winters are harsh, so you don't want to have a chilled wine, you kind of want to have a red wine. And during the summertime, you enjoy white wine. Yeah, it's a nice refreshment. So I know your preferences. Uh, uh, tell me, uh, what emotion do you experience when you're tasting wine or visiting a state? First of all, it, it's pleasure, it's, it's discovery, it's, um, it's, it's the taste and, and all the, the story and the people that are behind the wine, that really what attracts me to wine. Mm -hmm. That's uh, for, for me the same, uh, the, uh, the emotion also when, uh, when you try a, a glass of wine with, with the family, with your friends, uh, or uh, sometimes with the winemaker. And the winemaker, they, have, they, they always, always have a, a, a big story to, to explain about the region, about the winery, and that's, uh, that gives a lot of em emotions. Yeah, I think for me as well, um, the, the story behind the wine, and there are some wines where the story is kind of created out of nowhere, and then there are wines where you literally have this amazing story and you enjoy the wine together with the winemaker, and it just seems that the wine tastes different. I don't know, it just extra layer or depth to it. Uh, these are the ones that I like the best. Yeah, this, this is great what you said, that, that, that you have a, a lot of history, but in the same time, one is we just established uh, a few years ago, I would say. Uh, and there is uh, emotion everywhere, you know, different, different kind. Yeah, but I was also wondering what for each of you would be the wine, like go-to wine or the wine that you always have in your fridge that you know that you want to enjoy with your friends or family or have a as a nice gift. For me, um, I am definitely a wine lover. I love all of the wines uh, when they are well made. But sometimes, uh, well, I am sommelier since uh, 91. I have changed my mind or my taste uh, since uh, 30 years, uh, more than 30 years. But uh, a few years ago, 10 years ago, I've started to try more and more wines from the Provence, not only the rosé wines, but also the white wines and the, and the red wines, and they are very, very good. The winemakers are, are working very well, and uh, if I want to make a gift, uh, I'm quite sure I will always surprise someone with a very great wine from the Provence. But I do love also Bordeaux, Burgundy, uh, Piemont, uh, Portugal. Yes, for me, of course, it's fairly obvious. It's the wine that is always with me and my luggage and my suitcase when I travel, when I go to my family, my friends, 
is Chateau Robin, just because it's the wine I make uh, with, with my partners. I, 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 I pick up the fruits, we do the fermentation, we do the, the, the oak um, storage, etc. So of course it's the first number one that is always somewhere near to me in every place as I go. Uh, there, is, there is some Robin, but that's also the border region where, where some of my family decided to live about a hundred years ago. And of course that was the introduction to, to wine was, was Bordeaux, so it's still part of my heart and that's where I love to go and, and discover new winemakers and discover m- new people taking over a very old um, heritage. It's, it's, the first, it's the first reflex in, into wine, yes. This is great, a piece of history, you know, I'm so privileged to sit, uh, you know, here because, uh, you know, I, it's so much history and so much uh, passion uh, into the wine. When I travel, I love to um, concentrate and taste uh, and choose, choose the wines from the regions. Uh, uh, I try to avoid, you know, uh, Merlot uh, uh, drinking when I am going to, um, I don't know, to Barolo or the, or vice versa. So I, I, I like the speci- I mean, specialization, I would say, uh, in, in wine, but also food. You know, if I go somewhere, I try to the local food. And this is for me the, the, the really very, very important uh, to, to keep wine world and the gastronomy world going you know i think all of us when we choose the wine uh, we focus on the sourcing um explain uh, what is important to obtain wines directly from the winery for example what is what is really the it, it is, is a must we need to focus on that yes you are, you are sure that uh, the the wine is not a fake wine uh, you you know um uh, everywhere in the world, uh, there are, we, we, we have many problems with the fake wines. Um, also because you have the contact with the, with the winemaker, with the winery, you know exactly how they work, uh, how they want to distribute the, the, the wines. It's also very important to, to, to have uh, the, this feedback from, uh, from the, 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 the winemaker. And for, for, for the customer, it's also really important because he knows that our sourcing is direct uh, from the winery, and uh, that's uh, the guarantee that the wine um, was made there, and uh, we have imported uh, the wine. He has traveled only once, <laughs> he didn't travel uh, many times around the world. Uh, for many reasons, it's, uh, um, it's a good point to source the, the wine direct from the wineries. I agree, this kind of added value, you know, it, it works when we sell wine, you know, we are both from from selling, you know, uh, so it, it, it always works to the customer already. Ah, oh, this is directly from, from the Chateau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's also the storage conditions is that you can make sure that using professionals and it has, as Fabrice said, it traveled only once, but from the Chateau where it has the perfect storage conditions and also the, the travel so that everything is ensured that it's not under, I mean, extreme temperature, that the trucks are traveling at the right moments of the year and then it ends from one storage to another perfect storage. So it doesn't get some heat because it, it can be dramatic for a wine to stand in, in, a, in a trailer at 70 degrees for, for 24 hours. Then you can really burn the wine. So it's also very important to know it hasn't been in different storages and in different places or it hasn't traveled to Asia and came back to Europe. The only way is to, to find someone that can uh, guarantee. Especially for wine which are, let's say, able to be kept for long term, you know, so we need to be sure that the wine was not cooked some, somewhere. No, definitely. It's, it's like a child. You need to start the education very early for the wine as well. You cannot stay, have it poorly stored for a couple of years and then start to, to store it properly. So it's really important to know where it comes from. Authenticity, as, as Fabrice said, but also storage conditions. No, I completely agree. Uh, the provenance in the uh, wine world, uh, especially for those wines that are meant to be aged or are bought for the investment is really really important and i've been there i've tasted some fake wines <laughs> oh. <laughs> well talk about the critics yeah i, I I'm, I'm actually in, uh, wondering about the wine critics because they play a very important part in the wine world for a lot of people who are uh, investing in wines or buying wines from for themselves they sometimes trust critics more than they trust themselves i wonder so I was wondering, do you have your favorite critics or maybe vice versa, some critics that you absolutely don't trust? Of course, the critics have a very important role in the world. 
the, the advice I could give is, is look at as many critics as you can. I mean, if, if they have very different, if they have very different opinion on a wine, then the best way is to trust yourself. If there, if there is a trend on, on the critic and the trend is, is in your taste, then you should, but never rely on a single critic because of course all the critics have their favorite wines as well and are looking for something specific. But when you have five or seven critics, they're giving all a good rating or, or a poor rating to wine, then you can, you know, there is a trend. They can't, all of them cannot miss the point. Well, the critics are very important because, uh, because of our, our business. But um, first of all, I would say uh, trust your uh, retailer, trust your winemaker because he knows the wine. They know definitely the good wines. They know exactly what you want to taste, what you, what you appreciate. Um, and maybe you will have a, good, uh, a very good wine with a good rating from a, a critic. Um, which one is the best? I don't know. But uh, Thomas has said many, uh, many critics. Uh, if many critics give the same rating, then you are sure that uh, the wine is uh, definitely good. Is it also your opinion? Or? I think um, similarly as you do, uh, if you find a wine critic or wine writer that kind of have has the same uh, taste as you do or the same preference like you can follow that person it, it makes sense yeah uh because of course we all have our own preferences but for me the favorite person i like to read is uh is hugh johnson and i think once he told uh or uh, wrote in the book like forget about the 100 point uh scale or you know three glasses or five stars or whatever he just said which wine is the first one to be emptied and the evening that's the best wine that's it and i always think that this is probably the best advice uh yeah uh, i've read i have the same story <laughs> this um i used to work 10 years long um at the hugel winery in Elsass, and uh, um just before that uh, i was 15 years uh, long in the in the restaurants uh, many restaurants as, as sommelier and when i arrived uh, jean hugel um he was uh, 75 uh, he asked me Fawis, what is a good wine? And I said, well, you know, a good wine has to be like this, like this, like this. No, 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 no. What is a good wine? Well, uh, I've just said uh, a good wine has to be like this. No, no, no. The good answer is a good wine. When you drink a second glass of this wine, that means it's good. <laughs> I think we, we should also remember about uh, this is this is the nowadays uh, it's happening. And I think it will last with the development of social media. Uh, that we are the critics. We are the critics. That there are platforms which the consumer give you the 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 the, the, prefer, the preferences, and after a lot of people follow apps which which you can you can follow. And so this is my, I think this is by purely by taste. You know, I can see uh, in my boutiques people are coming uh, to buy the wine, and they have a they have a phone in the ha the, the, the hand, and they are just following the the stars which some friends gave uh, in the in the past you know uh, but this is tricky because some of the super expensive wine can have uh, you know uh, a little less than <laughs> less uh, awards there than, than than some cheaper wine so but this is the warp you know the democracy i would say yeah but but part of it is also to remain curious i think everyone should be its first critic that do i like this wine do i enjoy this wine do i want to drink more do i want to make it discover to friends saying i discovered this wine is fantastic it's also a big part of it to, so that it remains a pleasure and not just a, yeah. a search or a hunt for, for awards or for, for medals, yes. Yeah, yeah. I can say that your wine is good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so let's talk about the investing in wine mm, because this is what we are, let's say, doing actually. Mm, I would like to ask you, what is the perfect wine for investment? What is the investment grade wine? For you, I don't buy my wine for uh, uh, for investment per, in in a way that maybe most of the people understand it, like for uh, for a return of the money. I buy myself wine or I invest in wine that I know probably in the future I will not be able to afford anymore. So uh, I'm investing in myself uh, in in, a, in my future self. So my idea of investing in in wine is quite different. That maybe. For some financial per people, it would be. It's really interesting what you are saying because um, investing in wine, uh, many people think about the return of money. But uh, investing in wine, um, 
it's something different, as you have said, it's for you, for the future, uh, it's for your children, it's for your grandchildren. I mean, the people have always invested in wines, but they didn't know that was an investment. Um, but uh, I know our grandfathers, uh, they have always invested in wine. And sometimes on Sundays, they have opened a bottle. You know what? I am purchased that bottle 20 years ago, and now we will drink it to, uh, uh, together. And that, that is also the, the investing in wine. Uh, but then you, you have to be sure that uh, the wine have kept very well in good conditions. Yeah, but that's uh, it's clear, and it's also for for oneself is to say I want I want to have aged wines. I want to be able to open a bottle in 20 years when is the moment to open it, and I want to be able to afford it. So that's part of the investment of saying I'm going to buy young wines to make sure that when my children is 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 15 or when my children I'm get married, I have a a, a a nice quantity of wine that is drinkable and I don't have to to buy it extremely expensive from someone that stored it for me. And, and that's part also of, of the life. But it's also today, and it's very important, it's also an alternative asset for investments, for financial investment. Nobody should, should hide it. It has made nice returns over the last 20 years when you look at it. So it's also part for a, any investor deciding to diversify in investments from, from real estate to stocks to bonds. Definitely wine today is an alternative asset. And there are solutions to be able to invest into this wine. Without having the without having to do the entire logistics to say I'm going to invest the wine to the wine I'm going to own the wine and if one day there's a nice return on investment I, I will sell the wine. I like what you said the 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 wine you also accept the accept the future uh, returns uh, you invest in the memories you invest in uh, in, in the quality which uh, you bring the pleasure in the future. I think mean, this is this is absolutely great and the wine is developing with taste and. Uh, Mm, uh, and the quality is, is is getting up, you know. We are going back to the first question: huh? the emotions in the, in wines, and uh, that's also that uh, to, to to keep the emotions of, of the of the wine. So the wine world uh, has uh, let's say ages of tradition, but when did wine become the investment uh, product? Actually, I think uh, at some point people realized, you know, the bottle that I bought last year for. X amount of, you know, money, like this year costs this, like different amount of money. And then you start to wonder, you know, is it, does it make sense to maybe buy more and then sell that bottle uh, 10 years later? No, I think, I mean, when I think about my great grandfather, he already invested into wine. He had a lot more wine that he could drink in his entire life. So it was clearly as an investment, but as we said, an investment for next generations. But of course, when it, at certain occasions when they realized how much those, how much people were ready to buy these aged wines or, or these collectible wines, the idea came up is that should we should we drink it if yes at spe special occasions because it became a special wine, or should we sell it so that other people can enjoy it, and of course with a nice return. And I think that that that's how all started. But if you look into investment in into wine, it it was already there in, in the in the 19th century. People were already stocking wine to age it and then to resell it with a profit. Yeah. Yes, it's not new. It's not new. But now we we try to organize the the, the wine investment. Exactly. Look look at the platform like Livex. You know, it was 20 years ago established mm -hmm. by the by the financial. Uh, uh, guys from the city and and it really make it change a lot because uh, to standardize it you know because you can you can really check what is the value yeah it makes it made the market much more transparent is that you can you can check a bottle and say but of course also if you invested into wine for your own pleasure don't always do that because if you you take the special bottle that you kept for 15 years and then the first thing you go on the internet to see how much it worth sometimes it's gonna I mean, take you back from drinking and of saying, no, that this is so much money, I can, I cannot drink it. But if you invested it to drink it, wine is made for drinking. That's what we said earlier. The best wines yeah. are the empty bottles. But of course, if it's an alternative asset class, as we say, it is that you can also have it as a strategy and, uh, and, and then decide to invest into wine. But then you need to put the right conditions of that investment, exactly. such as you invest into bonds or into, into stocks or into real estate. You need the, not only the right product, but also the right conditions of sourcing, provenance, storage, resale, and so that people can trust you easily that it's an authentic wine that has been stored properly for so many years, and then it, and and then they're going to have the right right stuff. 
And that's where today, as you said, it's being organized much more than before because you, you can basically uh, organize that with professionals saying, I'm ready to invest into wine, advise me which wines I should invest in and make sure that the storage conditions are there, make sure that the authenticity remains with the bottle that nobody can say is that, you, yes, you can show me you bought a real bottle, but is it still the same one today? And then the, the ability or the platform to be able to resell the wine later. If you talk about the the, the worries of the of the potential, let's say, investor or the people who want to invest in wine, what are the hardest, to be honest, uh, uh, of, of 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 the people who may not may not invest in this in this product? So as you said, so probably they don't have a storage condition. What what else is is really the people afraid? Because uh, because they don't know if uh, for the the sourcing, uh, if the, the the wines are not coming from the wineries, um, they don't know also because the people they know they 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 want to purchase a few bottles for for a lot of money, and uh, they ask themselves, uh, do I ha do I have the good insurance also for uh, for for those wines? Um, if if the company who stores the wines uh, has also the good insurance, I think that could reassure the the, the people who want eventually uh, invest in wines i have so much question from the from the customer i have a wine that and that in my cellar we look in the cellar it becomes the the the, the hole in the kitchen you know uh, near, yes. near, near 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 the oven and uh, i said i'm sorry i'm sorry this is this is this wine is not not sellable you know uh so I think the, mm, this, this is super important to explain to the people that not, not all the wines stored in, in your house uh, can, be, can be resolved after that. And even if you live in the north of Europe, you have a very good basement where the temperature is there. I also have a lot of people calling me and they say, oh, my grandfather still has a case of that wine. But then we always need to expertise. So go there and check the place thinking, yes, it's a perfect condition. When we know the people and they still have, they still can explain us where they bought it and then we can trust them. But then also um, you need to expertise and then you need a intermediary to sell that wine because yeah. it's not just putting like an ad on the internet or, or something. So that because people that would be afraid of saying, if I have to put 700 or euros or, or real money into a case, I want to make sure it's the real case and I want to make sure it was stored properly. And I want to make sure when I open those bottles, it's going to be what I'm expecting. So that, that's where uh, it, it's getting more professionalized today because even if you have those perfect conditions, if you even uh, can, can take insurance for the content of your house, it's still you as an individual that afterwards is going in your case and asking, yeah. someone wants it? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. this for sale. Something the morning to the market. Yes. Yeah. Or, or, or putting it on the internet, on the, on the gender also between a car and, and, and a wardrobe, there's a case of wine that I'm trying to sell. So of course it's it's there. As as you go to a professional to buy a good wine, you, you should also go to a professional when you decide to invest into wine, to store it, and to and to keep it. And also have the possibility at the end of the day you think, oh, the return is not. I would prefer to drink it than to resell it. Have that possibility and thinking, but it was stored properly, under perfect conditions. I'm gonna have it for that family occasion for this Christmas. I'm gonna have the kids. I'm gonna drink it and enjoy it. That's the liquidity, as I always say. It it's it's the most liquid investment, not because of money, because of course you have to transfer the money. But at the end of the day, you can have some liquid in your glass and just enjoy your investment. Yes. But I think you you asked the question that people sometimes feel uh, too intimidated to go into wine investment. But I think at the same time, sometimes I think it is way too easy. Like as you said, I will buy this case of wine you know, or not even case, just one bottle, and then I will resell it in 10 years and I will make a great profit when actually it doesn't really work that way. Like it's it's not that easy. Like it's uh, it's it rarely happens that you can buy a case of six or 12 bottles and then you think I will resell the 11 and will drink my one. It, you know, like in the, I sometimes joke, I say that the best wine investment is the bottles that you have never seen. They always t like, they're always in the in bond warehouse somewhere and you just have them but you haven't ever seen them you can unturn them yeah and there are still 12 bottles in there's still 12 bottles yeah in bond and in bond but that's that's what you said is very important is that you need to own them you really need uh, when, when people tell me I'm, i'd like to invest into wine i say you need to be the owner of these wines 
don't buy a financial product that you exactly. are part of a pool of investors that are that are co-owners of a stock of wine. No, no, the investment in two wines. This is my wine, and in ten years' time, if I, if I can resell, and it is some wine that I like, and in ten years' time, if I can resell it, it's very nice. And if I can't resell it, it's not so bad because I still have fantastic wine, which is mine, and I can have it delivered to my house, and I can enjoy it with my friends, with my family. With my children. Let me ask you this question. Um, uh, so, do you think that good wine investor should also love wine? Yeah, that is an interesting question. It's a very interesting question. It, 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 I mean, if if you don't like wine, then it's really an alternative asset class. So you would invest into wine like you would invest into crypto. Yeah. Unless I missed something, you don't eat crypto. You cannot enjoy it. It's just there, and you hope it's going to increase. And you hope that at the right moment you will be able to sell it, which is the same with wine. There is the right moments to sell you bottles. But coming from a family of winemakers, wine traders, coming from that area, of course, for me, as I said before, wine is first pleasure. So it's a bit difficult to think yeah. I'm going to invest in something that I I don't really like. But it's a bit the same in bonds and in, in shares. Is usually you at least get interested into what the company does. It's just not a nice in number somewhere. It's, it's also a story behind a, a business people. So it's like there's there's some common points, but yeah, it's you could you could definitely say I want alternative assets. I'm going to buy luxury cars, wine, diamonds, watches, real estate, bonds, shares, and have it part of your of your portfolio. But then then you even need more advice. That's Make true. Sure that you do the right investment. So the same as in bonds or in shares. Is then you ratings and things. I think this is a, this is a wine that has performed, and that's what you see in LiveX, as you mentioned before, that you can see a trend. In certain wines, yes. I just sometimes think that it can be better that you don't enjoy wine as much. First of all, you might be, you might feel sorry to sell it after 10 years. Like, I really want to drink that bottle, actually. And second of all, sometimes people think, and this is what you said about the, uh, the advice. You know, I like this wine so much, so I will buy it as an investment. But whether or not it can age or it is a good investment at all, it's a different question. Yes, definitely. And that's where you need you need advice. People should know that not all wines age. Loads of wines are made to be drunk young or yeah. within the next five years. You shouldn't buy any bottle and then put it for 15 years. It, even in the right basement, loads of those wines after 15 years are not going to taste it. So it's it's also part of the, the advice of the sommelier or the shop owner or the winemaker saying, is that a... Many people ask me, how, how long do you think Robin can stay? And I say, um, we don't have, we have the history of be behind us. And when we try today, a 97 is still very, very interesting. So I say, I can tell you 8 to 15 years for sure. After that, it will depend which vintage, which conditions, which part of the world you, you're going to store it. But not all of them. There's many wines that are made to be enjoyed young and people should enjoy them. Yes. I'm sure you, 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 all of us, uh, we, we know some people who have said, well, I drink that bottle or we drink that bottle together, a very fabulous wine, uh, and we drink it for free because I have purchased 12 bottles. I, I, I have sold six bottles and for that price, they paid the, the 12 bottles. Uh, I have a customer which uh, decides to invest in wine, to buy some cases, you know, for the future, maybe for eventual uh, profits. Uh, but the main question uh, which I experience is, how I know that I really own those cases? What what we should ask for really? What what is what the market is is offering today? Well, um, we have a big big chance uh, in uh, in uh, in our uh, century because we have new technologies, and and uh, that's a big chance for us because we can use those uh, this new uh, technology to uh, to show to the customer that. He is really the owner of the wine because we can use, for example, the the NFT or uh, uh, this uh, digital uh, certificate, uh, who is uh, totally engraved in the in, on the web tree, and the people they know they are uh, they are really the owner of the of the of the cases of the wines. It's uh, uh, it's very easy to do. Um, it's uh, uh, very comfortable for all of the customers. And they know wherever they, uh, they, they are in the, in the world, uh, they know the wine, for example, with us, the wine is stored in this uh, warehouse in Luxembourg, and I know I am the owner of the, of the bottle. 
great. But I think this is the technology which has to be based on some, on some really the, uh, the, 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 the basement should be the trust. Yeah, and the basement should right. be the, the trust. And, 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 and the law is clearly getting an, an invoice and getting a title to the wine. I'm saying clearly, we have sold you this Buffalo wine. It's, it's your wine today. It's stored there, but you can claim it at any moment. You can say, I want my Buffalo wine. Or I have an inspection, a control office that comes every year and says these wines are there and they really belong to these people. That is very important looking at the, the, the professional you work with that he really gives you the title to the bottle mm -hmm. and the documents that show that these bottles are, are yours. They are stored with someone else, but they're clearly yours. It's not, not a right to a bottle or it's not part of a, a general inventory of bottles. It's clearly this is this is your case or this is your cases and that's just the most important thing yes. and of course then the blockchain technology the, the non-fungible tokens etc helps a lot to 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 make it much easier than then exchange papers as we did in the old ways but it's 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 part of it as clearly having having something that tells you you are the owner of a bottle that is stored in this place so and this is a great great talk with you um, about this uh, wine and investing and emotion uh, so let's close uh, this conversation. I have a last uh, last question actually to you. When you're rest in your in the restaurants, what is your top tip? The, the first thing: never take the cheapest wine on the list, and never take the most expensive wine on the list, and then start looking at in between. But then, it's it's your own feelings, and follow your your own trust and your own feelings of saying, oh, th this is something I know is probably very nice, and the price is right. That's what I would say to people is that look at it. Yeah. And, and of course, you can read people telling stories about the second cheapest or the second one. I don't believe in those. It's okay. just like I always take those two out and then I read the list. But of course, depending on the restaurant, depending whether it's a sommelier or not, depending on, on the food. Mm -hmm. But then, oh, we are eating this and this, this. I, I think it's going to be the right one and you have to trust yourself. Yeah. No. Or oh, ask also the... Well, you have said maybe uh, sometimes uh, there, there is no sommelier, but uh, sometimes the, the, the waiter uh, has also a very, very good knowledge. And uh, you can uh, tell him, well, usually I love this type of wine. What could you rec recommend to me? Uh, because I would like to try something else and uh, tell me what, uh, what you can recommend me. Super. Uh, I like to dig uh, to find, especially the big wine list, to find something which is really old mm. and uh, I cannot find it anymore. Yes. And, uh, very often has a very good price. Mm. Yes, uh, indeed. But it's always the question if it's still drinkable or not. Uh, lesser appellation, less known producer. And it's very often it works. So thank you very much. Let's raise the, yeah. the glass the of beautiful uh, wine. Pato Robin. Cheers. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you for sharing this wine with us. Thank you.